Doing something extraordinary is really, really hard. If you're like 97%, it's not a real stat, I made that up, of people out there in the world, then you are bitter and resentful about how hard things really are. Doing extraordinary sh is really, 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 really hard. And you think to yourself, it shouldn't be this hard. It, it shouldn't take this much work. It shouldn't take this much care. It shouldn't take this much effort. It shouldn't take this much time. But extraordinary things, things that are extraordinary, so they're above average, they're remarkable, they're worth people looking at and being impressed by and commenting on and wanting to be a part of. Remarkable, extraordinary things are never easy. It will never be easy. So you have to suck it up and get on with it. I started my business in 2006, and I can remember for years wanting to bring in a salesperson because I sucked at sales. I just wasn't good at it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was 23 when I started my business. I had zero experience. I'm talking to people way older than me. I had all these insecurities. And so I remember when I first started looking for a salesperson in my business, and I hired a headhunter. This is, this is 2009. So keep in mind, this is February 2009, the depth of the recession. If, if you're old enough to remember how bad the last recession one it was, it was terrible. So it's February 2009, the depth of the recession. And there I had nothing at the time. It was just me. It was me. I was the only person in the company. I had to let go of all my team. And I, and I rented this little tiny room in this, in this basement office. So it's just me. And I had nothing. It was like bad branding, bad marketing. I had no real company, 99% of successful candidates from this headhunter was talking to, they just completely overlooked me. They didn't want anything to do with me. And the ones who were willing to take an interview with me, like this little tiny company with no brand, with no presence, with nothing, the ones who were willing to meet with me, for the most part, I was like scraping the bottom of the barrel, honestly, right? Because I had nothing. And you know, the real strong experienced salespeople weren't willing to take a second look at me. And I thought, I'm never gonna find someone. I'm spending all this money, I'm never gonna find anyone. It was really hard. And then someone came along and they saw my potential and they took a chance on me. And I hired that person and I was super, super excited. And then six weeks later, the day that I'm flying out to the UK for a project, not even the day, 10 minutes before I left for the airport, the person I had hired six weeks earlier sat me down and said, Mark, I really need to talk to you before you leave. Oh, what's up? I'm sorry to do this to you, but I have another job opportunity and I'm leaving. I'm leaving today. I'm about to get onto a plane. I'm about to, f to face this like eight hour flight, right? And I'm thinking, <sighs> he's gone. I just spent $6,000 with a headhunter during the depth of the reception when I had no money. I just spent six weeks pay on a salesperson and got nothing out of it. And I'm sitting on the plane and I'm flying to England just with this anxiety in the pit of my stomach. And I'm thinking, no one is willing to take a chance on me. No one is willing to come along and help me. And I finally find this person who I think can teach me something and help me. And I give them my trust and I give them my hope and I pay them and they're now leaving me and I'm back to being all alone. And I'm worse off than I was a few months earlier, right? I just lost like 12 grand. And so other than me being able to tell you this story and the experience of having people quit on me, didn't get much back for that $12,000. And I remember thinking like, it's not supposed to be this hard. I'm trying to do something. No one is willing to look at me. No one's willing to take a chance on me. I'm, it's, it's super hard to get anyone to even come in who I think could help me. And then I had to start again. I had to start again from scratch, right? Went back to the headhunter. Let's look for more candidates. Let's, let's go out to the field. And then someone came in. Someone came in who was really willing to take a chance on me, who saw some potential, who was not the bottom of the barrel, and someone who ultimately, you know, was wor worked with me for seven years and really taught me a lot and really helped me build kind of the initial years for Fanta, for the agency I owned. And I share that story because it was like one of the first times when I was starting that I thought I made a little bit of momentum, a little bit of progress, a little bit of growth. 
and then it got ripped away from me and I had to start again from scratch. And I thought it just shouldn't be this hard, right? It shouldn't be this hard. I started my company in 2006 and I can tell you that we're still starting from scratch today. <laughs> We've been doing this for a long time and every time we make a few step forwards, we get kicked a whole lot of steps backwards. There is time after time after time where I feel like we're making some progress and we're building some momentum and then something comes along and we gotta start again from scratch. Whether that's with the team, whether that's hiring, whether that's clients, whether that's process, whether that's whatever it is. There are lots of times where it feels like things are finally clicking and then something happens that just kills all the speed and all the momentum and all the hope and all the hard work. And we go, it shouldn't be this hard. And we gotta start again because this is really hard. Starting something from scratch, birthing something, coming up with something is hard. Leadership is hard. Doing the right thing is hard. Investing today so that way you can have more later is hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. It wouldn't be worth it if it wasn't hard. You know, like everybody would be doing it, right? That's what we say. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But honestly, more than that, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be extraordinary. It, you know, you wouldn't learn what you need to learn. You wouldn't build the resilience that you need to build. You wouldn't do all of the things that you need to do if it wasn't hard. So I still find myself every few months going, oh gosh, this is just so hard. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it supposed to be this hard? And eventually after I stop complaining and feeling sorry for myself and all of these things, I just always come back to the conclusion that yeah, it's supposed to be this hard. It is supposed to be this hard for you and for me. And so that's the thing. Most people, that 97%, the, 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 most people, the stat I made up at the beginning is that people want the extraordinary. Most people want the extraordinary life. They want the extraordinary career. They pine for all of these great things, but they think it should be easy. They want it easy. They move to easy. And so they live in the land of easy and they never get to do extraordinary things because they're never willing to face the hard things. They think that it's easy for you and it's easy for me and it's easy for everyone else. So when they face the hard things, they go, it's not supposed to be this hard, but it is, it is that hard for everyone. So if you want to do extraordinary things, stop expecting it to be easy. Embrace the fact that it's hard. Face it. Keep going. You're actually doing the right thing if it feels hard. If it's easy, you're doing it wrong. If it's hard and you don't give up, you're doing it the right way. Because extraordinary things are really, really hard. If you like this video, check out this one right here as well. I think you'd like it a lot and I'll see you there.